Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this week's Get Clued Up session. Uh, we have a very special guest speaker here, uh, Enoch, with us, who's going to be talking about the benefits of team sport at university, amongst other things. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Enoch to take it away. Hello, everybody. Um, Enoch showing me here. As Joe said, I'll be talking about the benefits of sport in university and in life. And I got a little bonus for you guys at the end of this um, workshop. So just introducing myself, I actually went to London South Bank University from 2000 to 2003. I always had an aspiration to be a professional football player. I recall that when I was in university at 18, um, saying to my friends, maybe it was just a little bit of banter, but I used to say three things. I used to say, I'm going to play professional football. But um, I'm going to play for Nigeria national team. And by the time I'm 28, Barcelona is going to put in a bid for me. So two out of the three things did happen. So from graduating from London South Bank University to playing for Nigeria national team in under a year was my progress. During my youth, I was never at professional academy when I was younger. I had many opportunities to try and develop my game and play, but was rejected by West London tryouts in the London trials, even my first secondary school training session, I didn't make that squad. So I had to use a lot of that rejection to motivate me into getting to the place I was. So by the time I graduated from university, I had an opportunity to play against Luton Town. They brought me in on trial after that game against them. For eight months, I was on 40 pound a week expenses. So I was literally, literally going from London to Luton on train, walking one mile from the station to the ground and going training after training walk one mile back to the station and going back home so from there i actually was able to be in the first team travel up and down the country with a squad but still on 40 pound a week expenses for eight months this happened until i really started developing and really started producing on the field i managed to score a hat trick against brentford in a league game and from there i signed my contract and i signed for two and a half years so that's my story um, of becoming a professional football player. At that time, I was managed to play for another 12, 13 years after that, played for some big clubs like Leeds United, um, Bristol City, um, played in the championship, played in League One, and also was able to transition out of the game and do some of the stuff that I love doing now. When I was at probably the biggest club in my career, I managed to do my master's in finance as well. There was a little setback at the time, so I decided to do something different. And now that's changed my life going forward and, and it's changed where I've been able to go just by having, um, having a little clear vision of what I was trying to achieve. So first I'd like to talk about clarity, right? So it's kind of understanding your passions that go a long way in trying to create your future. Clarity of purpose acts as a powerful catalyst for positive change and essentially means ensuring that your main objectives are coherent, clearly defined, easy to communicate and directed at the challenges presented. The power in simply making a decision goes a long way as the first step in what you're trying to achieve. Sport usually teaches you this, right? So when you're, when you're in a sporting environment, when you're in a team, even as an individual, even in individual sports, you're gonna have a clarity of what you're trying to do, whether it's to whether it's to win the next game, whether it's to win the league, whether it's to stay in the division, whether it's to qualify for the Olympics, whether it's to qualify um, for the finals, whatever it is, you have a clarity of purpose of what you're trying to achieve at that time. And taught, sport teaches you that without that clarity, you kind of just go through the motions. You don't know what you're working towards. So you know, as you practice more and more, you develop, and you see the rewards on the field. You see the rewards by keep developing your times, keep developing your game, keep developing how you're moving forward in that sport, right? So without that clarity of purpose, you will not know what you need to do in order to be able to achieve what you're trying to achieve. So it's all about kind of fixing your weaknesses, especially less than in the face of an opponent. So even if you're even if you're trying to strengthen those weaknesses, but you come in against an opponent who kind of knows your weaknesses, those weaknesses can be lessened in the face of opponents. So for instance, as I was a very, I was a, a pacey striker that I played in the game. So as a defender coming against me, if he knew he was slower than me, then maybe he just changed his game a little bit 
for, for coming against me, right? So he just like drops off another five, 10 yards and makes sure that I'm not going to use my pace against him. I'm not going to use my strength. So he uses his weakness and he lessens it in the, fa in the face of an opponent that he knows is stronger than him in a certain area. Again, it's just having that clarity of purpose and knowing what, you, what you're trying to achieve. And so, yeah, so it's like um, that clarity is to really know what you're setting out before you want to it before you go in to achieve it and then moving along that process and going forward playing sports you identify with a group you identify with your team you identify with actually being an athlete so you actually develop your identity and that identity creates a lot of who you are and what you are about and also what you believe that you are capable of what you believe that you're capable of. It's not necessarily what you desire that comes to fruition, but also is about that part of your identity. You bring it into your identity. Once you identify as an athlete, once you identify as I am, I am a football player, I am a track runner, you do things in your life along the path of that identity, right? So it shapes you, it shapes who you are, it shapes what you're about, and it shapes how you go about your life. So once you do that in sport, you're also, you're also becoming that person. You're also becoming a football player. You're becoming a, you're becoming a track athlete. You're becoming a swimmer. Before I ever turned pro, I was that, I had that identity within me. I am a pro soccer player. I used the affirmation, I am. So I identified with being a pro football player before I ever even managed to be in the professional ranks. So I started to do things in my life that I thought was aligned with being a professional soccer, a professional football player, sorry. I live in the United States now, so I, I, I interchange between soccer and football. But yeah, so I identified with certain things and then I moved that into my being. So every time I, I stepped out on the field, whether I was playing for my university, whether I was playing 11th tier, I was trying to improve my game, but in my mind, I was eighth. I was a football player. These were the things that allowed me to do the things that became what I what I was able to achieve later down the line. It enables it enables you to be to move away from certain labels that we all give ourselves, right? So it's the identity is like a, a curious topic. So we label ourselves whether we're tall, whether we're thin, whether we're fat, whether we're um, our race, our gender. We have all these labels and these labels confines us to a certain box. But once you identify with what you are trying to achieve, then it's who you are. So you don't go around saying you're short when you're tall. You don't go around saying you're male when you're female. So a lot of these things is like who you are identifying with at any given point is what you're going to bring into your is what you're going to bring into your life and what you're able to achieve. So I think almost a lot of things that you've achieved to date was because you have identified with it prior to achieving it. So you have to notice what you bring into as part of your identity and see what you're aligned with and see if it's that identity is aligned with where you want to go and your life goals, or if it's misaligned with those life goals. Now, sport, of course, has so many transferable skills that we can use in the workplace. So even from my transitioning out of the game, I was able to bring so many different things into an environment where I had to do I, I to know what I really wanted to do in life, I had to do different jobs, right? I had to go out of the game and I, I went into sales, I went into I went into management and all these different things that I was able to learn in the sporting environment, working with a team, just the communication elements, um, teamwork, the discipline, just the mindset, mentality, and and just just being able to have that drive to win, that drive to succeed. All those transferable skills took me from being on the field to doing the stuff that I'm doing off the field. So I was able to go into I was able to go into a workplace and say, actually, you know, I'm not an entry level, I'm not an entry level employee. I can come in at a management level because I can show you now that there's multiple different things that I'm capable of doing just because of what I was able to do in a team environment. And you have to remember, sport is all about 
It's all about the competition. It's all about the winning, right? So it's all about getting that mentality and getting that mindset and that drive to push yourself forward to meet your certain goal. And that's the same in business. In business, as a, as a whole, you're going to try to meet a certain goal. You're going to try to reach a certain level of, of sales, a certain level of where you're trying to take your that company. And that's going to... That's going to entail certain skills that, as a sports person, you can take into that environment, especially the discipline. The discipline is a huge element. So knowing what you need to do, doing the right things at the right time. Of course, when no one's watching you, are you doing the right things? Are you able to move your life forward where you're able to get to do the right and put together the right elements so that you can be successful? And that creates a certain type of mindset. So once you're once you're good at your sport and once you have that drive in your sport, you can create that mentality and that mindset that's able to help you be successful in anything you really to undertake. You just have to take those same principles to move forward in what you're trying to do in life. So those same principles where you know on a, on a on in a team environment that you need to communicate. You know when someone needs you on your team and you pull your you pull your teammate up and you have that type of leadership you know you have that type of teamwork where you know you're only as strong as your weakest link that leadership element that you can bring out of the sporting environment and into the and into business and into being an entrepreneur is can bring you out and bring you to that success that's part of what you're trying to achieve it's having a correct mindset of moving forward and that correct drive and drive to be as 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 good as you can be and achieve your certain goals that you want to achieve. So one of the things that um, we really need to discuss, first you have your clarity, right? So you have your clarity of purpose. You know what you're trying to achieve. You know what you want for your life. Then you have to look at your process goals. You have to kind of reverse engineer your success and say, okay, this is this is what I'm trying to achieve. How do I go about doing it? And then you want to really look at your process goals. You want to really look at the small steps and recognize those small steps that can take you to where you want to go. So when you're looking at um, a team that's playing 38 games in the league that wants to stay in the division, they want to win the league, they want to break it down to, into small chunks, right? You want to look at what's, what, what can you do for the next game? What can you do for the next five games? What can you do for the next 10 games? And then see where you're at, see where you need to adjust and then keep moving forward. So something that's really topical for me, for me right now. So I hate running long distance, right? So recently, as you can see by the base, um, I've been challenged to do some runs. And instead of just going through the motions and and just going out and just, and, just, and just jogging for the sake of jogging, I really just challenge myself every day. It's like, can I get better? Can I get better at doing this? Can I just test my mind, test my mindset and mentality and keep improving on my times, keep improving my runs and keep getting stronger and stronger? So on the 19th of January, I started doing this three miles, 3.72 mile run. So I did it in 40 minutes. So it felt like a preseason after the first day, right? So my legs was aching, my IT bands were screaming. Um, would, would have loved to have just gone and just go and get a massage, get all those that lactic acid out of the legs. Now I could even bend down or sit down. It was my first run for a long time. So I kind of enjoyed retirement, right? So for a few years, it was like, there was no, there was no activity. There was no running, there was no hard runs. So now, the next day, of course, I didn't beat my time, but I was aching, my body was hurting, but I went through and got up, get out, let me get it done. So I did the run without stopping. So when I realized, when I was focused in my body, I was thinking about the pain, the, my back pain, my back seizes up when I run. Uh, my ankles were hurting, uh, running on concrete was maybe hurting my knees. When I was too focused on my body, I felt all of that. And it wanted me, it made me want to stop. It made me want to stop going forward. It made me want to slow down. It made me want to like, oh, forget this. I hate running anyway. Let me not do this no more. And then when I was focused on my feelings and emotions about running, and that the fact that firstly, I hate, I hate running long distance. I've always been a sprinter. Secondly, it's like, um, I'm not good at, I'm not good at running. This is not my event. I don't like it. I know my back's going to seize up. When I was fo who focused on those emotions and feelings, again, I wanted to slow down. I wanted to hold. I wanted to stop, start to walk. 
But when I just focused on like the next landmark, I was focused on how the next half a mile, I was focused on my split time. Can I beat my split time? Then there was like other people on the street and they're doing their walks and they're doing their runs. And then I made a competition that they didn't even know about, right? So they're ahead of me. It's like, can I beat that guy to the next street? Like, can I beat that guy to the next um to the next lamppost? And so I when I was focused on those little things, I was able to move forward and actually move quicker through my through what I was doing. So I just every time my mind went into my body and the focus went into my body, all the emotions of it, I kind of just reframed that and moved into next landmark, the next, the next street light, the next traffic lights, the next um, the next landmark that I can that I can get and the next split time that I can beat my time. And once I was able to do that, as you can see in the last couple of days, my time has gone down by almost four minutes from the first day I run. So yes, I'm getting stronger. Yes, I'm getting fitter. But now I'm also processing those goals and I'm seeing the process of those goals that, I'm, that I've put together. And now I'm able to focus my energy on the next landmark, the next process, the next step I need to take in order to achieve my goals. Sometimes when you're thinking of the end goal, you guess you have your clarity of purpose, but sometimes when you think of the end goal, where you want to take your business, where you want to take your sport, sometimes you can be overwhelmed. It seems so far ahead. But once you once you can reverse engineer that success, once you can reverse engineer where you want to go, you can look at the next landmark. You can look at the next step you need to take to achieve what you're trying to achieve. By doing this, you're able to see and, and build momentum and enthusiasm about what you're trying to achieve because you start seeing your successes. You start seeing, okay, I am getting better. You start seeing, yes, I am getting closer to my goals. Yes, I am getting along the path of where I need to be to get to what I'm trying to achieve. And that's and that's a key element. It's about recognizing that success as well and rewarding yourself for those successes along the way. And once you can do that, you know that your focus is always on the next step that's not going to overwhelm you, that next step that's not going to seem too far away, but it's just outside your comfort zone. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Every single day I run, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. But I know I can, at the end of it, when I see my time, I know obviously I've got stronger. At the end of it, I'm still, I'm still in a little pain. I'm still in, I'm still in that discomfort. But understand that once you're going through these process goals, is managing this discomfort. This discomfort is your key element to growth. Now we're looking at performance, right? So even at university level university level you're still going to be judged by how good you are whatever team you are i know when i was at london south bank there was uh, three or four um football teams right so at, at some point you're going to be matched into a certain group and it's like can you perform can you get to a level of ability where you're where, where you're fitting and then it's like are you are you driven can you keep developing your game to get better just because like when i was a kid i was rejected so many times it doesn't mean that I didn't have the ability or didn't have the ability to learn and grow to get myself to the next level. I was able to show that even though I had all that rejection up until I was 21 years old, I was still able to grow and I was still able to perform at the highest level of the game. So your development in any field is, is comparable to this in life. So at every age you learn, right, the more and more you take the steps to the next level, your schooling teaches you this. So you start in, you start secondary school, you're 11 years old, you get to 12, you move up, you move on year on year, you move on. As you get older now, you're all in university. You get older, it's less about what you can do in a year and more about what you can do and how quick you can develop in the months, weeks, and even days. And sport teaches you that, right? So if you, if you want to win, if you want to win, you obviously have to rise to the occasion, you have to perform on that day. But then what, how you develop is obviously if you use that defeat or you use certain elements of your performances to try and get better and better, then it's like, okay, you can you can prepare yourself for success. But all that takes is just consistent effort every day. It takes an approach that is aligned with who you are and what you're trying to achieve. And it just takes persistent intention. It's about creating intention. And it's like... Um, you know, with with intention is like you, you're going out and you're there's a there's a power of 
having an intention of what you're trying to do. So if you're if you're going forward with a project, you're going forward with a university, you're going forward with your sports team, you have to have an intention behind why you're doing what you're doing. When there's an intention behind it, then there's is, is an easier path to go towards your towards your goals. And sport and sport teaches you that, right? That intention and that clarity of what you're trying to achieve, of what you're trying to achieve, that intention drives you forward. That intention gives you that motivation. When you're tired, can you go that extra yard? Can you go the extra mile to get that win, to 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 win that race? That's what sport allows you to know about having that intention behind the actions that you're trying to take. So like I said earlier, I was able to move from graduating London South Bank um, in 2003 to um, and, and playing 11th tier football in 11th tier football in England to playing for the Nigerian national team in, in under a year. So at each point during that year, I still had to develop, I still had to go forward, I still had to perform, I still had to rise to the occasion. And yes, there was times in that period where I had doubts, I had lack of self-belief. I didn't know what was happening in my career. I was moving forward to a point where I'm getting paid 40 pound a week expenses, but I didn't know how my career was going to develop. But at every point I was like, I've just got to keep getting better. I've got to keep getting, keep getting better. I've got to keep turning up. I've got to keep preparing and facing this challenge that is that is here for me. And life, life is going to have those challenges for you, right? They're going to have these obstacles in front of you and you have to rise above them. So at every point during that, during that year, I had to keep getting better. I had to develop. I had to challenge myself daily so that I was able to perform when it really mattered. And eventually I got to the point where, okay, I feel like I belong now. I'm part of this, I'm part of this group now. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the better players in this group. I can perform when called upon by the manager. I can, I can perform in front of thousands of people. I can perform, I can do my job. I'm, I'm comfortable enough, I'm confident enough that when called upon, I can do my job. And that's the place that you have to get to in anything that you're doing in life. There's gonna be a point where you have to perform and then it's just setting those goals and bars for yourself where, like I said, they're just out of reach. Uh, there's a level of discomfort with it. You're a little bit uncomfortable. You're outside your comfort zone. And that allows for growth. And once you allow for growth, you see, you start to see your performance can get better and better. And as you know, in, in sport, one week can constitute a lifetime. It's like for 12 years and having that longevity in the game, I had to make sure I was challenging myself every day. I had to make sure I wasn't going through the motions because every single year to be in that 1% of guys that make it into the professional game, every single year I had to make sure that I was one of the better players. There was guys younger than me. There was guys faster than me, quicker than me. There was guys probably better than me um, that wanted to take my place. So I had to make sure every single year, not just uh, not just within my team, there was obviously within my squad that I was in that wanted to take my place, not just within the area of kids, local kids, younger kids in the academy that wanted to take my place, but globally there was that competition that there is a kid that wants to have the opportunity that I had and they wanted to take my place. So every single day I go into the field, every single day I turn up, I have to perform. I have to perform to a level of competency that is that is aligned with that team, that is aligned with that manager. And so once you're in the performance industry and once you're in, in that kind of industry where you your your numbers matter in the top level of business, your numbers are going to matter. You're going to be valued and you're going to be paid based on how you perform, right? So even in those in those different elements, there's going to be a way where you cannot rest on your you cannot rest on your laurels. You have to treat it like every single thing matters. Like every single day matters, every single week matters. Yes, I know in general in, in business, you may go into a job and you may have a three month probationary period. But if you get into your mindset that every single week you're trying to achieve something within that job, you're going to see that you move up that ladder quicker. You move 
you're going to do things that your competition is not going to do. And so you move forward a lot quicker because you are performing. You're showing a capability that is beyond your role. And that's the key element. And you have to look at, there's so many different stakeholders in sports, right? So especially when you're playing professional sport, it's like they're always on your case for improvement. I remember when I first, when I first played my first game and I'm looking at the newspapers and I'm looking at, I'm looking at, um, what the fans are saying on forums and they're saying, oh, I'm not good enough or they're saying he shouldn't be pro club. I even had the captain of my club at one point say to the manager that I wasn't good enough. And then even later down the line, he had to apologize because I just kept improving. I kept, I kept performing and you're going to have dips, right? You're going to have dips in performances and still people are going to be like, you need to perform. So having that longevity is about really performing day in, day out, because again, in the ruthless business of professional sport and in the ruthless business of, of wanting to win and having that drive to win, you get shipped out as old news. And like that, like I said, the highest level of business, your attitude is going to be prevalent to how you stay at that level for as long as you do. So you've got to also remember, right? So you, we're talking about performance, we're talking about clarity, we're talking about all these different elements about how sport and how we can move forward in our lives, how we can achieve what we want to achieve. We're still going to overcome and we're still going to have to overcome setbacks and obstacles. And like, just because you're taking the right actions to focus on what you're trying to achieve doesn't mean that there won't be obstacles and don't mean there won't be setbacks in your life. There's always going to be setbacks along your journey in becoming who you choose to be. And it's going to be your ability to maneuver above, around, through your obstacles that will be key to helping you achieve your aspirations. It's allowing your setbacks to transform into comebacks. Setbacks will only derail you if you dwell on them. If you, if you sit with them for too long, if you... If you're just thinking about the mistakes that you've made, if you're thinking about the past, if you're thinking about, I should have done this better, I should have done that better, I should have done... Yes, you can use that in terms of how to push you harder and how to move forward to be better, to, to not make those same mistakes again and use it as a learning curve. But if you start to dwell on that negativity, that setback is, is going to make it harder for you to push forward in trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve. And it's the same, so like, I remember... Um, in one game before I signed my pro contract, I missed I missed the goal from two yards out. It was the easiest chance in the world. I wanted to smash it in the net and I missed. It was a bit embarrassing for me, right? But if I dwelled on that in the game, the game's still going on around me. It's like there's still another there's still another 75 minutes in the game to go, right? And this game's going around. If I still dwell on that mistake, I'm not going to show for the ball. I'm not going to get on the ball. I'm not going to do the right things that's going to help my team and help myself to obviously flourish in that game. So after a couple of minutes of getting, just needed to get it out of my head, just continue with the game, I managed to score the winning goal, right? So I used that setback for a comeback. So yes, I got the banter in the changing rooms about missing the goal from, from two yards out or whatever, but because I scored a winning goal, that setback wasn't as harsh on where I was trying to go and what I was trying to achieve, right? So, but you have to use that setback to really motivate you to do better, to get better. Use your mistakes. Use your mistakes as something to fuel what you're trying to achieve. And as the saying goes in sport, you learn more in defeat than you do in victory. You got to use those defeats. You got to use those setbacks. Use those obstacles to fine tune what you're trying to do and get better and better at what you're doing. And these setbacks and obstacles usually come in the right time in your in in your processes to make sure that you can refine that process. And so at the end of it, you actually, you actually better for these setbacks by using these setbacks and obstacles, your whole processes of what you're trying to do actually get, actually get better. It's more refined, it's more understanding in who you are as well and what you, and how you, how you react and respond to things. And that's going to be a key element is your ability to respond not your ability to, not how you react to things, it's how are you going to respond. As humans, we all got, we all react, we all react emotionally, we all react to certain things that happen in our lives, but it's going to be your ability to change that into how you respond going forward.
as one of the things that sport teaches you is to be present. If you look at a lot of um, the best players, they they get into this flow state during the game. It's like they're not thinking. They're not thinking about instructions. They're not thinking about what they need to do next. Usually, when you're when 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 I, my, when my game was a little off, there was a um, I was thinking too much. I was especially in the beginning of my career when I was when I was still playing for expenses. I was thinking what the manager wanted for me. I was thinking where I needed to be on the field. I was thinking about how to score. And usually you're a fraction too late um, by doing that. Then it just becomes easy. You get that repetition, you get that repetition and repetition, and it becomes easier to it comes easier to perform at a level that you're trying to perform. And then the key element is then getting into like a flow state. But if you're stuck in your past emotions or stuck in your future visioning, you're wasting your precious moment in moving towards your goal because the, the only thing you can do is what you can do right now. What you're doing right now in this moment that allows you to be prepared to prepare for what you're trying to achieve in, in the future, right? It's not about the future. It's not about that end goal right now. It's not about the past. It's not about your mistakes. It's just allowing you to be in that flow state where you're here. You're here right now. You're not, you're not distracted by things around you. You're not distracted by external stimuli. You're simply focused on where you are right now and doing what you're doing right now and allowing yourself to have that 100% focus in this moment that gives you the chance to see the opportunities that's available for you. So in this moment, you can take that responsibility. You, you have that ability to respond, right? So if you're... You may be limited in how you may act, but your ability to respond in this moment is is there for all to see. And in responding, you 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 can respond to certain cues. So even especially on the field, you can respond to certain cues on the field when you when you're in the moment, you can see certain things. Right? Um, there's going to be tactics. There's going to be strategies that you're, you're you're going to have in business and in sport. But once you're in the present moment, you're able to see opportunities. You're able to allow yourself to see those opportunities. So without being rigid in the way you think things should occur, so rather than focusing too much on those tactics, too much on those strategies, yes, you have them. Yes, they're in the back of your mind. But once you see things that um, in that present moment where you can just kind of deviate from that certain path without being so rigid in how things would occur and you can move forward in being able to know what, what is hindering you, why are you, why are you not moving forward. Be present, be present in that moment so you can understand there's, there's opportunities available that you may not see if you're not fully focused, if you're not in that present moment and if you're not in that flow state. So a lot of what sport teaches you is obviously is preparation, right? Is you do, you do the repetition, you do the training, you you get what you need out of it, and then and then the repetition and the preparation prepares you for what you're trying to achieve. It prepares you for going after your that clarity of purpose, that, that end goal, that ultimate goal that you want to achieve. So sport teaches you a growth mindset so i don't know if anyone's read the book by um or the, the paper by carol dweck when she talks about growth mindset and fixed mindset so it's, growth mindset is just basically knowing that you can learn knowing that if you're you have the ability to learn something and get better at it and grow in whatever field you you're doing i was lucky enough to have that growth mindset as a kid to say even though i've been rejected i can still go forward and i can still win i can still win i can still become something, I can still become something that everyone told me I wasn't good enough, even at the level below that. So it's like, it's just keep having that growth mindset that you can learn, that if you put in the work, if you put in the practice, that you can you can get better at what you're trying to do. So it's like, you have to think about, in terms of preparation, you have to think about so many things, so many things is um, that our body does that we have no control over, right? So our breathing, for instance, we do a lot of shallow breathing and we we just breathe unconsciously, the way the heart pumps blood around the body. We have no control over, the, over those things. And in the same way, once you're able to perform without thinking, once you're able to perform kind of unconsciously in what you're doing, you're in, you're, like I said before, you're entering into that flow state. But that comes from just your preparation. Your preparation is the key to put in everything in place and able to you to work on solely on your instincts and your muscle memory. 
and when we're when sports people are at peak and when you're when you're at your peak in whatever whatever sport you're you're doing you know that you, you put in that preparation whether it's one day a week two days a week three four days a week you put in the preparation to get that muscle memory once you go into the field you want to work on your instincts but the preparation puts you in that in that place it puts you in that place that you can perform under the pressure of competition and you you often see when I, I always remembered when I was when I was in um, when I was having bad when I was having, when I was performing badly and having just a period of not scoring goals or periods of where I didn't feel great. I was often overthinking what I was doing, but then I needed to go back into what I was what my how I was preparing for that game. And then every as as I got older, every single time it, it changed, right? So. As I got older, my body changed. My preparation needed to change. Also, it had to move with the times. What worked for me when I was 21 didn't work for me when I was 30. So it's about creating those habits of routines that are aligned with getting better. And then once you see that, you can see sport teaches you like your output straight away, right? So if you prepare one for the week to play a game on a Saturday, you win, lose, or draw. You win the race or you come second or third or fourth. It shows you what you need to do to get better. It shows you straight away, okay, this is how I performed. How do I progress? How do I get better? So you see the rewards and you see the defeat straight away. So you know where there's where there's physical improvement that can be made. So just like myself, when I was doing the process goals of my runs, I could see my split times. I can see how much faster I needed to go towards the end. Did I need to make a sprint finish? Do I need to up the pace? I can see the processes of what hey, where I need to improve. It's different in life in general when you see mentally, like emotionally, spiritually, it's very diff difficult to see as you're moving along how you've moved forward. But once you start getting into certain routines and habits and you, you move forward with your life and then you look back and you look in hindsight and then you're like, Oh, I actually, I have moved forward. I've, I have achieved something. I have, I have, um, I have moved forward mentally. I have moved forward like um, emotionally. I'm not as reactive. I'm, I'm responding more to certain things in my life. You're going to see that as you grow and develop in life. So it's like the person you are today and the person you are yesterday is going to be completely different from the person you could be tomorrow. And you're going to see in hindsight where you've achieved and how far you've moved forward in what you in what you're trying to do and any and each level of development in your own life how you're not reactive to certain things as you was in the past how you've moved forward um emotionally how you move forward um mentally as well just your mindset the, sh the shift in mindset that enables you to be successful and you have to remember that the person of yesterday is and the person that achieves what you're trying to achieve achieve is is completely different they're they're two different people completely biggest thing especially is the sport is that it teaches you resilience um is it gives you a certain grit and determination to keep pushing forward in the face of adversity and sources of stress you can build willpower by overcoming fear and accepting it and embracing it um, for what it is and that helps obviously with with that resilience in life sports will bring you so many different elements where if you have that resilience you're able to push through push forward in whatever you're trying to do um life is going to bring you challenges um of course sport does but remember like as a, as a sports person you're still human so you're going to have personal challenges you're going to have challenges in your business challenges in your family and once you're able to know that you can get through it once you're able to know that um, you, you're not going to give up on something. You're going to you're going to keep going forward. You're going to use those emotions of of fear, of anger, to actually help you get better. You're going to keep building that that resilience within your life, and that's going to help in anything. Especially if you go out of, go out into this world as an as an entrepreneur, go out into this world in business, go out into this world as wanting to be um, in the top in the top ten percent in in business as a as a CEO or CFO or all this or all these like roles or if you want to start your own business resilience is going to be a key element of how you get to what you where you want to go so remember that in, in sport you're there to like you're, you're you're going to finish a goal you've, you've got a medal to win 
in life those things become your dreams and do you have that resiliency to to keep going to keep pushing forward to to get there one of the things that is apparent and i think a lot of stress has come from it is where people try to control things that are not in under their control so i think one of the things that i learned personally from from playing professional football was that i, I was only going to control the controllable i can't control my manager i can't control the referee i can't even control the fact that i may score or not score but what i can, can control is myself i can control the fact that i'm going to be aggressive i can control the fact that i'm going to get a good night's sleep the night before i can control the fact that my nutrition is going to be in point my preparation is going to be in point so that i'm able to perform to the best of my ability and then i can take it from there so you have to be able to know that you can only control the controllable don't think and focus too much energy in trying to control things that are totally outside of your control. That's where you get too stressed. You cannot control life. Life is one of those things that you probably can, you cannot control. Things are going to happen. The only thing that you can control is you, your perceptions, and how you respond at any given time to what's around you. You're going to use that as the basis of how you build your, how you build your resilience. And you're gonna you you should understand that your life is basically an accumulation of how well or how bad you responded to things that have occurred in the, in the past, right? So again, the same thing is like if I responded to the fact that everyone said I wasn't good enough, and I kept that as part of who I believed I was, then I wouldn't I would I would have given up on my dream of becoming a professional football player. So that's the same thing. That's how you build your own resilience. It's like, it's how you respond to the things that people are telling you. And remember, it is just information. We determine, we always determine whether it's good or whether it's bad. But if we just see it as it's just information, I'm just going to use this information to make my life better, to make my sport better, to do things better. If you can use that as that, okay, if you can use it in that way, use the information that's coming to you regardless of what the information is no matter how good or how bad so i can give you a short um example so when i was at Leeds united as i mentioned earlier um my first season the biggest club i played for probably the highest point in my career in terms of salary as well um i got the blood i got a blood clot on my lungs at the, um, at the time so i was diagnosed with a, a blood clot and the doctors were saying that i may never play football again so for me i was like okay i can do two things this is how i can respond or i can, I can react i can wallow and say have that self-pity and say okay why me my life is over i've got uh, nothing more to live for football's taken away or i can do what i did and i started my masters in finance so once i started that masters of finance it actually changed my whole outlook on life i was exposed to something completely new that I'd never really been exposed to before. Um, obviously, in terms of just the education, but around the education is like, okay, there was opportunities that I could see going further in my, in, in my life. There was new doors were opening, new ideas was coming into my mind just because of being exposed to something different and something new and something, again, outside of my comfort zone. And then um, I ended up playing football for another five, six years. But what also happened was I was actually more confident on the field because of what I did off the field. So, yes, I had that point where the doctor said to me, yeah, I may never play football again. Now I wasn't scared of it. Now I wasn't scared of not playing football again. Um, so I had the degree, I had the masters under my belt eventually. And then it's like every two years, your contract is up, new managers come in and they they, they, they don't want you. So it's then, OK, um, we're gonna we're gonna ship you out. You come into the end of your contract, and you're fighting for a new contract, and you're fighting you're fighting for your livelihood. And I was more confident on the field because I knew I had my, I had something in my hand that I can take into into the world. And because I was exposed to something new, I was actually using it at the same time as playing football. So instead of dwelling on mistakes, instead of dwelling on things in in my game in the afternoons, I was like I was concentrating on doing something different. And then when I was and I was focused on that, and then when I was focused on on the football and the preparation and, and that element, I enjoyed it more. I actually enjoyed the game more. I enjoyed my position as a footballer more. I enjoyed what I was doing more. Whether I was playing, whether the manager picked me or not, I still enjoyed my environment because I knew at some point this was going to be taken away from me, 
and I'm, it's something that I love doing anyway. But now I'm more confident in the fact that I can move forward with my life without it. I have so the adversity that was I was faced and the resilience I was able to build from that was to say, no matter what happens to me, no matter what happens in my life, I can use it as a way where things can get better. I can expose myself to something better and build that resilience that way. So now we'll talk about the last element, which is like, how does the future look, right? So 2020 was a, um, was a crazy, crazy year for everybody globally. And it's, um, it's 2021 that started off crazy. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm based in, in America, I'm based in the US now, and obviously with the elections happening and, and stuff like that, it's, it's, just been, it's just been a crazy time. There's a lot of emotions around the world. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of people obviously in, 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 in situations where they need help. Um, but there's also a time where you can design your life. This again, if you're if you're focused on again your clarity of, of your purpose of what you're trying to achieve, if you're focused on that, whether that's in sport or whether that's in life, if you're focused clearly on that, it doesn't matter what what's happening around you. It doesn't matter about the circumstances. All it matters is about is how you respond to it and how you then prepare your life to benefit yourself going forward, right? So if you look at just life in general, every day we have like a finite amount of willpower. So we're not, we're not designed to do things that are scary or difficult or uncomfortable or even new. So sometimes we have that pain or pleasure that motivates us. So we either motivated to move away from pain or we're motivated towards pleasure. Now motivation away from pain is usually a stronger drive than motivation towards pleasure. You think it's the other way around, but it's, it's motivation away from pain is, is a strong motivator. Um, but we're generally um, only motivated to do things that are easy or easily achievable. And we, as humans, we love to stay in our comfort zones. So right now in, in, in 2021, it's like the whole world is in this uncomfortable space. There's a lot of negativity. What I will say to you guys is, is, is you have to use this time. Use this time wisely to make sure that whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, whatever great idea you have, whatever thing, whatever, whatever it is that you want to achieve from your life, use this time as a way to navigate your life and don't let it chip away at your motivation to begin with. Don't let your ideas about yourself, about what you believe, about what you're trying to achieve, get buried along with that dream just because of the world situation. If you look at the history of humanity, right, there's always been a time where certain like world crises, we had World War One, World War Twos, we've had like the Great Depression, even recently in 2008, uh, we had the we had the uh, the great recession of of two thousand and eight with the housing collapse. At every single point in human history, when there's been a point, there's been opportunities, and there's been the most exceptional people who have used this time and used the opportunity to create something for themselves and for other people that allowed them to change the scope of their life, but change the scope of the world as well. So what I'll say to you is like, especially if you're if if you're if you, if you're a sport and you can't play sport, right? I give an example of myself. I created Global Soccer Pathways at the end of 2019. So I was doing a lot of private coaching on the field, aspiring players telling me they want to go pro. I was like, okay, let's go, let's, let's do some private coaching. I'm going to show you what it takes to be pro. It's something that I'm passionate about because I didn't have that in my life. I didn't have that at 16, 17, 18. Someone just taking me to the side and saying, this is what you need to do to go pro. I kind of figured it out by myself. So this is why I kind of give my knowledge and experience back to young players now. Then March 2020, um, obviously with the whole COVID-19 um, crisis hit, stuff got locked down. I was speaking to a lot of youth athletes. All the, all the clients I had, they were just losing motivation. They were like, I can't go out to play. What's the point? I'm not going to do anything anymore. They just lost the motivation, lost the will to play the game, lost the will to still think about what they were trying to achieve for okay, it couldn't happen. So that's when I kind of re, 
I adapted to the situation. I kind of rejigged my whole business and went into more mindset and performance coaching. And then I ended up finishing writing a book called Unleash Your Potential. So one of those things is like, um, is using those elements now to kind of again adapt to the environment and change where your where your life goes. So now I my reach to how many young aspiring soccer players is even bigger now. Now I'm speaking to thousands of soccer players instead of like the, instead of hundreds. Now my reach into helping to aspire young players and young and young people in general has gone even bigger. From that book now, from writing that book, now I've actually had people call me up and say, okay, um, we want you to we want you to do a high performance talk. We want you in businesses now. So just from just from writing a book, just from having this COVID element, um, I was able to actually change my whole business plan, business idea, and create something useful for myself and useful for other people as well. So that's how you have to look at it. So it's like do what you need to do to get to the place you want to be. If you're in if you're in sport and you can't play sports right now, work on your weaknesses. Work on anything that your weaknesses have that um, that is needed to go forward, right? To, to improve, to prepare for when you go back into competition. Do whatever the competition is not willing to do to go out and become the better you. And you will never you will never know how far that's gonna take you. It's like if, like I said, it's like there's there's gonna there's opportunities for you, whatever you want to achieve from the reason why you're doing a sport. I'm guessing there's some there's some competitive edge to you if you're playing sport right now. I'm guessing that there's a lot of there's a lot of places where you are going out, you have that drive, you want to win, and probably maybe even want to get better, maybe even want to go to a higher level and play at a higher level than what you're doing now. Use this time to work on your weaknesses. Remember, there's no distractions right now. So there's no, in Florida, yeah, because Florida's fully open, but in, in certain parts of the world, if you're if you're in the UK, if you're in, if you're in California, New York, I say to all my players, right, okay, you, there's, no, there's no youth games, there's no... There's no um, university games right now. But what can you do for yourself to improve elements of your game? What can you do to your, for yourself to improve yourself as an athlete, to improve yourself as a person, to improve your processes? If there's no bars, there's no clubs, there's no distractions, you can spend your time scrolling for social media, look at what other people are doing, or you can use this time to create new processes in your life, new habits and new routines that are able to take yourself to the next level. And once you go back into performing, once you go back into a sense of normality in terms of how the world is looking, then you're going to be able to see why you did those things and how that's going to push you forward and how that's going to push your life forward. And one of the things is um, I always say to people, it's like, since you were born to the when you die, the, mo the only constant thing is change. You do not stay the same day to day to day. You do not stay the same. But we resist change so much. But what we have to do is simply embrace it and just get ready to move with whatever the times is and, and move in a way that can benefit you as you're moving forward in your life. So I've got a little... Um, um, a little bonus for you. So I like a little bit of creativity. So throughout my life, I've also always written, written poetry and and elements like that. So one of the things I'm going to leave you guys with is a, is a little poem called Stories. It's something I wrote a few years ago, but I think um, as a little as as a little um, bonus for you guys, um, maybe you're bored of me speaking now, but it just gives you gives you something a little different and breaks it up a little bit. So this is called Stories. Be aware of your resistances to love and growth. Sell towards keeping coexistence with above afloat, together entwined, forever in line. Understand your truth by severing time. Your dreams are your treasures in mind. Measure decline. They rain from within like sunrise. Weather the signs. Never did find your ideal by the conditioning we hold. Forge your capacity to imagine, envision in the mold. Don't be belittling your role, nor inhibiting your goals. Step beyond the bounds of who you have been, no limiting your soul. Cultivate a new depth of willingness that is beyond logic. 
And yeah, we come from it. Rationalizing is a fun topic. No right or wrong, stop it. So much you won't understand. Like the science of irrational behavior that makes you wonder, damn, life is made up of your stories, not atoms. The metaphysical little you, you can't foresee to fathom, but it's for you to fashion a life of expanded glory. The pages of your book has no words. So you plan your story. Shortly, consciousness expands as the capacity of our hearts. You'll find you're not held back by the veracity of your past. Tenacity to the last, never quit when you flop. Just refuse to play small just to fit in a box. And you know that box tends to be your own self-images. As long as you have breath, you choose how your story finishes. You're not a product of your environment. That line is viral and locked in the energy of a label. That's why you're tied to them. And then you try to vent, but your surroundings got you locked in prison. But you daydream and nothing can stop your vision. Free at any moment to change internal resonance and vibration. On the journey, feel the pleasantness of migration. Free to regard yourself in a different light. You begin to choose how you live in this life. You look in the mirror and notice things to change about your looks. You go about doing it, no shame in what it took. Life is the same, use us what's happened to you as feedback. The compass will point you in a direction where to succeed at, where to proceed at, how to flow and react like a river. Have a more efficient and elegant impact on your mirror. Stop being at war with yourself and have some compassion. With your limited perspective, it's all of you, don't come and ration, as they will begin to align with your will and intentions. And those same emotions is the fuel to fill up your engines. Be still with your tensions and watch them dissolve. Not fully disappear, but watch them evolve. They are locked in energy, is transitional and influenced by the sum of you and each individual constituents. Its continuance is no coincidence. Listen and love it. Listen and love it. You'll find in time you'll match emotions to desires like a perfect love fits. The small part of you gets integrated to the whole. Those aspects you wish to change are not separated from your soul. There's a level where the simple memory doesn't bring the emotion, but the energy of the melody is swimming deep in the ocean. Listen to it, understand it, make room for it, but still focused on your desires. Be attuned to it. You see, you don't even need to fix, just love her or him even when what occurs is grim. Our relationship with ourselves can be somewhat contentious. In the stories we create for ourselves, we are great inventors. There's tools you can use and there's a system for the task. Seek your truth from within. There's wisdom if you ask. Fact or fiction, life's the draft, like the graft. Depend on the description that you draft. How about free from the sense of being a victim of the past? If you live in the attitude of possibility, start from a clean slate, which is a lost, which is a lost vicinity. In truth, your future is untouched. You can call it a virgin. Leave the past just there in the past. You stored it reoccurring. Heal all like a surgeon, the dance of personal discovery and service. And your hidden desires and talents you will cover to its surface. Open your eyes to your big picture. Find pieces to the puzzle. Like doing mental weightlifting, increasing all your muscles. With this strength, you reduce your fears and anxieties on the path to the better you that every woman and man tries to be. So see, I'm weaving words of uncommon vision and intimacy. This tapestry is woven, so it's living in intricacy, infinitely growing, so you start emerging from the shadows, smoking hot to the point you're burning like tobacco, propelling forward, resonating, surging in a mad flow of pure beingness, but being bitter batters beings with a bad blow. And it's the tad slow, the person your compass is pointing to, but when you move in that direction, it's like God anointed you. String of events made relational by particular perspective. It's your story and you're held prisoner by reflective. Comparisons to the past, each story, same raw materials. Tune into old frequencies like a TV and more aerials. Those things you used to manifest reality with noises and misgivings. Thoughts, beliefs, attitudes, feelings, choices and decisions. Hear the voices and we listen. You know the one that tells you stop. Dreams that take us to heaven but we reside in hell a lot. Yells your flock, but you know I'm forever certain. Following your heart and intuition will make you a better person. So you can dead the version that is no longer serving you. Waves of suspense in your story, but you're a surfing dude. Always birthing new because you're forever in your infancy. You're forever in your infancy. The incubation period is set. Never get there instantly. I would just like to wish all of you good luck in your endeavors, whatever you're trying to achieve. Have a have a have a great time trying to do it. Enjoy the process, fall in love with the process, and good luck to the, good luck in the future. Amazing stuff. Uh, thank you so much for that. That was actually incredibly engaging, and I really enjoyed that. I 
I'm sure everyone else did as well. Um, on behalf of the Students' Union, I want to thank you for your time and turning up today and, you know, giving one hell of a presentation. I mean, it's what you do and you're incredible at it. And I just want to thank you. And it's really refreshing having an LSBU alumni here uh, joining us and showing, you know, what the future can hold for students. And yeah, um, cool. I think that's, that's pretty much it. I don't know if you've got any more closing statements, whether you've got any social media uh, you want to shout out for people to follow, anything like that. No, you, you're good. Have you got any social media, Enoch, that you want to uh, shout out and throw out there? Cool. Okay, well, thanks everyone for tuning in and join us next week for our next Get Clued Up session, which is LGBT, uh, his, part of LGBT History Week, and it's all about LGBT history. Um, so thanks everyone um, and see you next week.